Good morning everyone, it's Andy first team here and welcome back to week 9 of this sub 255 marathon training series. Bit of a different one for you today. This week is a recovery week, so we're switching things up. I've got a lot to talk about, uh, namely how my heart rate zones have increased, how we have a little surprise this weekend in the form of a last minute race entry and a couple of other bits. So what we're going to do is, I'm out here now, it's Wednesday morning, I've got a little fart leg session to do, which I'm going to keep quite easy-ish, and do 1.30 on, 1 off. I've worked up to 2 on, 1 off, but I'm going to be kind to myself, it's a recovery week. So, I'm going to get this done. What a pleasure it is today as well, it's light as we get up. This is quarter to seven. So it makes life so much easier. So we'll get this done, come on the journey with me, we'll head back to the office, we'll talk about those extra little things. Okay, I touch bases with you after every set. So that's the first set done. I kind of went into Linear Park on the warm-up and saw a big pack of boar kind of in the distance. And I thought, I'm not even gonna spook myself or spook them. So I turned around, came back out here. So I'll try and linear park in about another couple of reps. Anyway, first set done, feeling good, feeling fresh. Here we go again. Second set done, that's four out of ten. Ooh, it's cold, but feeling good, feeling good. Legs are feeling it after the gym yesterday, but feeling good, feeling really good. In control, rocking some decent pace. All good for a Wednesday morning. An ultimate set done, feeling great, two to go. Let's get it done. And there we do go, ladies and gentlemen. A solid 10 by 130 on, one minute off. As I said, wanted to keep the reps a bit lower in terms of time than what we have been doing, just because it is a recovery week, but still put in a really good pace, which I think we did. We'll see when we are finished. Anyway, that's enough for me this morning. Let's head back to the office and talk about those uh, little extras. All right, guys, we are back in the office. As I said, a bit of a different format this week, but I want to go through with you what's happened this week and two exciting announcements that are coming up. One including a race we are jumping into this weekend. So without further ado, let's talk about this week, how it's been. So the plan initially was um, that I would be taking some kind of recovery week when I knew I wasn't running the London big half. Uh, I basically said to Doug, Doug, mate, I would like to keep building until Gloucester 20. And he was like, that would be five or six big build weeks. We need to put some kind of recovery in there. So I was like, okay, that's fine. What, what should we do? And he came up with a fantastic suggestion that last week, if I ran my normal Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if I had Friday, Saturday off, if I run Sunday, my long run on Sunday, and then have Monday off as well, in four days, we'd have just run the once. And that would give my body a chance to just chill out and then move into this week, which is a slightly easier, intense week. It has worked a treat. He's a legend. So basically, I... Uh, chilled out for those four days other than that long run which went quite well and then this week has been a nice and easy week we started off Tuesday with a zone one run 40 minutes just literally got out there uh, got back through the door my wife was like you're early I'm like yeah I'm normally out on a Tuesday night for like an hour and a quarter maybe an hour and 20 and it soon is going to be more like an hour and a half an hour and 45 when we get close to marathon doing some more marathon specific stuff but for the moment this week it was just 40 minutes that was easy and do you know pace was incredible it was below uh, eight minute miling which i've said in the past i always keep my easy runs above eight minute miles but now that we're doing heart rate training and i'm having to stay in certain zones and work on certain paces it's interesting to see where my actual easy running is at and uh, that was that was a real massive confidence boost Wednesday I got up early did the session like you've just seen that went really well Doug's feedback on that was simply this is great we've got the speed still there and a good combination of the speed still there plus the the speed endurance is building during all this marathon training the long distance stuff this is an ideal combination things are going well yesterday thursday i got out and did a zone two run for an hour and i covered 8.5 miles in an hour at 702 or 703 average pace 
it blew my mind because my average heart rate was 143 and zone two spans from 141 to 148. So I was really in the middle of that zone towards the lower end, clocking 702, 703 average pace. That is 10 seconds off a three hour marathon running at that lower heart rate. Again, mind blown. All of this stuff is going well and I'm going to be doing kind of a mid mid plan update over the next couple of weeks as to how fitness is and, and progression and that sort of thing. But for now, recovery week, that is done. And before I tell you what is happening on this Sunday for the race, my first announcement is that, as I alluded to last week or the week before, I set a new threshold heart rate. This is incredible because this shows massive signs of fitness uh, progression and all my zones have shifted up. So I've basically gone up three beats per minute. Now I emailed Doug, uh, beats per minute, yeah. I've gone up from 163 beats per minute to 166. So I emailed Doug and I asked him, mate, can you please put something into English for me so that I can tell you guys what what, what this means? Because I would sit here and, and ramble and try and give you a roundabout kind of explanation. So what I'm going to do, my eyes are going to divert to my email here. I'm going to read out what he says just to give you an explanation of what's happened. So... Your previous level uh, was 163, which was set back when we did the initial tests at the start of coaching. So this is back last September, I think it was. The reason it's increased to 166 is likely down to your cardio system improving over time and your body becoming more efficient. So threshold levels increase slightly. In short, your previous uh, was 163 yesterday, you improved it to 166 on my long run, so this was two weekends ago now. Lactate threshold, your lactate heart rate, is defined as an intensity of exercise at which lactate begins to accumulate in the blood at a faster rate than it can be removed, i.e. if you're over your lactate threshold, you cannot sustain that pace because your body will continue to build up lactate and you will not be able to recycle it out, flush it away. So if your threshold heart rate is 150 and you're running at 155, you will quickly begin to struggle. However, if your threshold is 160 and you're running at 155, it will be hard, but you could sustain it. So basically, uh, over time, the zone one and zone two training facilitates and enhances lactate uptake by developing slow, slow, twitch, flow, slow twitch muscle fibers that are responsible for using up lactate to use as an energy source that is predominantly produced in the higher heart rate zones. So this is why we're doing a lot of zone one and zone two work because, as I've just said, I'm trying to find it again, so much in this email, we're developing those slow, uh, slow twitch muscle fibers that are responsible for using up the lactate and that will make them, become, make them become more efficient. So this is all incredible stuff and as I said my zones have all shifted up so my easy zone now which was up to 137 is now up to 140 so I can now run up to 140 beats per minute in my easy zone. Zone two is now up to 148 so on and so forth. So my threshold now is 166 and that obviously is going to be a very important number for me to bear in mind at the marathon because I do not want to be getting close to that or creeping over. Not that I'll be wearing a heart rate monitor on the day, however I've got to bear that in mind. So this is really exciting news guys, it means that this stuff is working. Heart rate training is something I was very sceptical about in the beginning, however um, as I'm the type of person that likes to run by feel and all of that gumph. I was thinking I don't want to be a slave to the watch but actually do you know what I haven't had to be it's been so good with my workouts all I'm doing is setting them up on my watch so I'm not checking pace I can upload it when I get home and we can analyze the heart rate and see what we're doing it's only on the runs where I have to stay in a specific zone that I'm having to check it job done so that for me is a massive boost a massive massive kind of confidence boost we're halfway through the plan we've got another half to go so Fingers crossed we'll keep upward trending. And the final bit of news, guys, is I am jumping into the Newport Half Marathon this Sunday. Why, I hear you ask, are you doing that? Because you weren't going to be running the big half and now you said you were content without running a half marathon. Well, I was content and then my big half race pack got, through, got posted through to me in the post. My number came out and everything. And my wife looked at me and said, just go to London. Just do it. Just, just go. And so she did all the investigation of trains and National Express coaches and all of that sort of stuff. And I was like, do you know what? If I go the day before, the train tickets are going to be pricey. The hotel's at least 100 quid. 
And I'm going all up there just to run a half marathon without the family. With the family, it's a different ball game because we can make an experience of it. I'm not prepared to spend that much money just for me to go and run a half marathon. So I looked at the National Express coaches. I could have got like a 4.30 a.m. coach up to London for like five quid, which would have been cheap as chips. But again, I'm gonna have to be up at three o'clock, drive to Gloucester for four o'clock, get on a coach at half four, I'm gonna have to eat my breakfast on the way. And it's like, again, for a half marathon. So I was like, do you know what? I really appreciate your thought and sentiment, but don't worry. What I might like to do though, is look at another half marathon. So I had two other half marathons on the books, on the cards that I was thinking about. Number one was the Forest of Dean half marathon. That was on March 24th. And what I was thinking there was that I could run up there, which is three and a half miles, do the half marathon and run back, making it a 20 mile workout. I checked that with Doug. He was like, yep, yeah, that's, that's fine, that's good. Uh, or I had Newport, which is this weekend. And I kind of favoured Newport because the simple reason, it's gonna be mimicking the marathon course. The Forest of Dean is gonna be very undulating and I'm really now trying to dial into uh, running on the flat, getting used to pounding the pavements. Newport half marathon is going to be very similar to what the marathon course is. I don't think the courses are anything like each other in terms of the same roads, but same level of elevation, that sort of stuff. And um, <clears throat> secondly, it's quite a way out from the marathons. First weekend in March. So after this race, we still have seven, six or seven big weeks of training ahead of us, minus a holiday that I have in April. Uh, before we have to start tapering down for the marathon, which is great. We're going to get some really, really important, really long, good long runs at marathon pace, all of that stuff coming up. And if I was to run the Forest of Dean one, that would be cutting into that time and maybe not utilising my long run as efficiently as I could be. So I chose the Newport Half Marathon. Lee and Corey are doing it as well, which is great because they're also doing Gloucester. So we're going to jump into that together. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to do it, to be honest with you. The last, last, the last fast and flat race I did with Swindon. That all went tits up, as you know, with the stitch. So this weekend, I just want to have fun. I just want to be consistent. I said to you guys, my goal last year was that my half marathons were consistent and they were consistently around the 124 mark. This year, I want to set a new trend. I want my half marathons to be at a lower consistent rate. I know what I could do, but I don't want to put that pressure on. I just want to go out this weekend and have fun and not get a stitch. So that is happening. Hence why this video is coming out now, because Sunday you will see the video for the Newport Half Marathon. Simples. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to me ramble on. I hope you've enjoyed the week uh, roundup and what is coming this weekend and the news about my heart rate. Very exciting, all of it. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and I will see you next time. Until then.